Good morning. I pray that your Wednesday was filled with spaces and places of joy, of peace, of happiness, that you were able to do something that made your heart sing. So this video, I'm actually asking you a question, which is what is your opinion? So I've been reading this book called No Mud, No Lotus. And it's by Teach Not Han. And he's a Buddhist person, monk, who had recently crossed over to be with the ancestors. And so in this book, he's really talking about how life will always give you suffering as well as times of joy. That you can't get rid of one or the other. You can't just have all happiness. There has to be some suffering. And so thus the title, No Mud, No Lotus, because lotus grow out of mud. But anyway, I was reading this part and it says, it's about the third mindfulness training, true love. And so I'm going to read what he says and I'm going to read it twice because I want to hear your opinion. Knowing that sexual desire is not love and that sexual activity motivated by craving always harms myself as well as others. I'm determined not to engage in sexual relationships without true love and a deep, long-term commitment made known to my family and friends. And so I'm going to read this again. Knowing that sexual desire is not love and that sexual activity motivated by craving always harms myself as well as others, I'm determined not to engage in sexual relations without true love and a deep long-term commitment made known to my family and friends. And this really struck me because as a trauma survivor, for me, and this may not be true for others who have been survived sexual trauma, particularly for me, it was as a child, a part of my responding to what had happened to me because I didn't know what sex was at nine years old. I was molested. Um, I became promiscuous because, I, and maybe it's because the person who was doing it was a very close relative who I cared a great deal about and I thought cared, cared, a, great, cared a great deal about me. And in my childish mind, um, I don't know. I just became promiscuous. I don't know how to unpack that any further. Um, but that's, I'm not the only one. For a lot of folk, depending on if how your first introduction to sex is, kind of sets the stage of how you see yourself as a sexual being. And so as a result, I spent many years just kind of defining myself by who I was sexually. But what he says is sexual desire is not love. And that sexual activity motivated by craving always harms myself as well as others. And, and I want to hear your opinion about that. Because, you know, I was the kind of young person who I could just do, let's just kick it. You know, and if I felt like you were getting too close, then I would find a way to get away from you. But for a lot of people, that's not their story, particularly we as women. For women, a lot of times we equate, when we engage with someone sexually, when we engage in, in an intimate act, it, 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 it produces feelings, you know, and, 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 and in some instances, you know, fortunately, those feelings are reciprocated, but in a lot of instances, they are not. And so again, when he says, um, sexual activity motivate, motivated by craving always harms myself as well as others. For me, because I didn't have any feelings attached to it, but I did harm the folk who were beginning to actually have feelings for me and thought we were going someplace with this, um, these encounters. And that was not even in my scope of being. Now, you may say, well, you was just a player. You was just messing with people. But in my non-heal trauma mind, I never even thought about it like that. I never even thought about what that could have been doing to someone else, how I could have possibly been leading someone on. 
And so I don't want this video to be too long, but I would love to hear your opinions. This is no judgment. This is simply something that struck me that I want to share with you. So what do you think about that? Do you think that sexual activity motivated by cravings always harms myself as well as others? And this is not for people who are in committed relationships, okay? In committed relationships, of course you crave the person who you're with. These are for folk who um, you and whoever your partner is may or may not be on the same page. These are for folk who believe, you know, if I engage in a sexual activity with this person, maybe they'll want me. Maybe they will want to take this further. And so again, I'm very interested in hearing your comments. Have a wonderful Thursday. I just got finished doing a two mile walk, which is kind of me rebuilding myself and drinking the smoothie that does not look very good. And it doesn't necessarily taste very good, but apparently supposed to be good for help fat burning. So anyway, have a wonderful day. Talk with you later. Love to hear your opinion. Bye-bye.